Coming up on Harvest, why a relationship with the father is easier than you think. Dr. Richard Leslie Parrott talks about knowing and doing the will of God. And former psychic Christine McGuire reveals battle-tested strategies for defeating the enemy in her project, an insider's guide to spiritual warfare. And later in the show, Pastor Mark Lance concludes his teaching with part three of Walking in Wisdom. Stay with us. Harvest starts right now. Hi, howdy, how are you, and hello. Welcome to another edition of Harvest alongside the lovely and talented Valerie Lowe. That would be her. I'm the less than lovely and hopefully <laughs> semi-talented Chuck Freeby. Great to have you with us. Stefan Rattle, a John assignment with Feed the Hungry over in Uganda. Mm -hmm. We'll catch up with Pete Summerall in a couple of moments. I know you're a little bit tired today. That stands to reason. It's just been that kind of weather here in the Midwest yes. with the cooling down and Ugh. everything. But you ready to go today? Yes, I am. I'm ready to go. I. I'm not looking forward to the snow that we're going to have this weekend. Oh, don't uh, don't say that. <laughs> Hopefully, if we don't talk about it, it won't happen. Is that the way the world works? If you, if you if you just ignore a problem, it'll go away, right? No, that is not the way the world works. <laughs> well, nevertheless, let's find out where Pete Summerall is. Let's turn on the big Google Earth machine and see where it zooms into as we circle the globe, and it looks like it's heading in on the island of Cyprus, which is where Pete Summerall joins us from. Where are you at today specifically, Pete? Well, I'm up on the roof of Middle East Television, the building that uh, Middle East Television is located in. It's up on the third floor. This is the roof of the, uh, of the building, and behind me are all the satellite dishes that are utilized for Middle East Television, uh, both in receiving signals as well as sending signals out. Why is it so important for us as a company to have METV? Well, it's an amazing opportunity that we have with Middle East Television, METV, to be able to broadcast the gospel throughout the entire Middle East. We were just talking a few minutes ago about our NFL programming and some of our other programming that we believe are attracting a very unique audience to watch Middle East Television and get the gospel of Jesus Christ. But at the same time, we've got on good sports and good family programming. It really is a terrific opportunity. Pete, one of the other amazing ministries that we offer here is prayer. What would you like our audience and partners in faith to pray for? Well, the main thing that we'd like people to pray for is to pray for the staff, pray for wisdom, and also pray for finances of Middle East Television. It costs an enormous amount of money for us to be able to continue to operate Middle East Television. And we're very well known throughout the entire Middle East, but especially in Israel. And I believe now is a critical time for us to reach out to the people of the Middle East when there is so much perceived turmoil going on. Pete, with all that's going on in the world today, how can METV help though? Well, as we all know, during a time of crisis, people are going to be looking for answers. And I believe that Christian television and uh, the combination of programming that we have, I believe, can bring answers to people. Uh, and we need to be praying that people will tune in Middle East television and get the answers that they're looking for. All right, so what's up next for you? Well, actually, a little later on today, I'm going to be flying over to Tel Aviv and uh, going to be staying in Israel then for a few days. Uh, the group is going to be arriving a little later, and we look forward to being able to have the group there, but I really look forward to being able to go to Jerusalem and pray for the prayer requests that have come in uh, through Prayer Line. I believe it's a very, very important time for us to be able to get down and pray for people, go to the Western Wall and pray for those requests and pray for all of our partners. So, you know, you can call right now to Prayer Line, 1-800-365-3732, or you can email us at prayer at .com. And we want to pray for you. I want to be able to take your prayer request to the Western Wall. Hopefully a lot of people will take you up on that offer, Pete, and get those prayer requests in here in the next week or so. We appreciate you being with us again today. Hey, it's great being with you. I love being here in Limassol, Cyprus, uh, and I look forward to being in Israel, but it's great to be with you today on Harvest. And next week for your reports, do you have an exact location of where you'll be? Thanks. I'll be with you from Israel next week. Okay, well, I was hoping for a little <laughs> something a little more precise than that. We knew he was going to Israel. He oh, just said so. But, he'll uh, keep us in the loop, especially on Twitter. Yes, that's right. I forgot to tell you today. 
Pete Summerall, boy, his followers are just growing by leaps and bounds. He got on Twitter earlier this week. You can follow him at Pete Summerall on Twitter and find out where he's going to be each and every day. I, I don't know how many tweets he's put out lately, but uh, I'm sure he'll keep us up to date as he goes to Israel. And, and speaking of the comings and goings of people here at Lassie Broadcasting, mm -hmm. apparently um, <laughs> you have offended somebody enough where they're just leaving the company. It is not true. It is not true. Meredith said she's not offended. She was not offended by my mistake, you know, with the, I, I told you yesterday, the viewing audience, that I made a mistake and said that someone else designed the set of Harvest because that person had been doing it forever. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was really Meredith Cheddar and now she's leaving. But Meredith will tell you she's not leaving because of my mistake. No, she won't. But nevertheless, <laughs> Meredith Cheddar is leaving. We're saddened by that. Mm -hmm. uh, we're happy for the opportunity that we can present to somebody to come join this wonderful company as a graphic designer, full-time position with benefits. Well, maybe my position will reach that at <laughs> some point. Two years design experience or a bachelor's degree in graphic design required. You, you can apply at that same address that we give you by mail, or you can apply online at lacy.com or send your cover letter and resume, including a link to your portfolio, to hr at lacy.com. HR is not Harold Reynolds, but uh, <laughs> human resources. And we'll take care of that from there. So hopefully there's a very talented graphic designer mm -hmm. out there who wants to work for this company. And, and work with us. It'll be great. Well, despite that fact, nevertheless, <laughs> we hope that uh, you'll participate as well. And we want to connect with you on all kinds of social media. Facebook, right. Twitter, send your email to live at lacy.com. I'm told that the international news is next, which means I better get over there. Harvest continues in just a moment. Now on this Thursday, October 30th, 2014, here's what's happening in your world. U.S. health officials say it will take some time to ramp up the country's readiness to respond to this potential Ebola outbreak. The U.S. healthcare apparatus is so unprepared and short on resources to deal with the deadly Ebola virus that even small clusters of cases could overwhelm parts of the system. To assess America's ability to deal with the major outbreak, the Associated Press examined multiple indicators of readiness, and the results were worrisome. Supplies, training, and funds are all limited, and there are concerns about whether health care workers would refuse to treat Ebola victims. Every hospital in the United States, every doctor, uh, every public health clinic is acutely aware of what went on in Dallas, and that was a real bucket of ice water. I think we're ramping up very quickly, but we, it's going to take months before we're really there. Many hospitals and emergency clinics were already stretched thin before the recent threat of Ebola. On the other hand, the U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations is encouraged by steps taken in recent weeks to tackle the spread of the Ebola virus. Samantha Powers, speaking in the Ghanaian capital of Accra, says the distribution of existing medical supplies remains a problem. We have the capabilities in all of our countries to end the curve. And the question is, how do we take supplies that exist in warehouses like this around the world uh, and get them where they're needed, where people are uh, desperate uh, for our help? So far, nearly 14,000 people have been sickened in the outbreak, which has hit Liberia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone hardest. The head of the UN mission for Ebola response is confident of containing the disease if the international community works with national governments affected by Ebola. Israeli police have shot and killed a Palestinian man suspected in an attack on a hardline Jewish activist in Jerusalem. The incident threatens to further inflame already high tensions in that city. The shooting came just hours after a gunman on a motorcycle shot and wounded Yehuda Glick late Wednesday. Glick is still hospitalized in serious condition. Glick is an American-born advocate for greater Jewish access to a sensitive Jerusalem holy site, the hilltop compound known to Jews as Temple Mount. The Jerusalem holy site has been a flashpoint for violence in recent months and has been fraught lately with clashes between Palestinian protesters and Israeli police. 
For more about what's going on in the Middle East, let's bring in our LaSue correspondent, Brian Bush. And Brian, let's start from a greater landscape here. Sweden today recognized Palestine as a state. What's the reaction there in Israel? Well, Chuck, hi, it hasn't been a very positive one from Israel because Israel doesn't want uh, countries taking unilateral steps uh, in declarations like this. Um, so Israel's foreign minister probably had the classic response. Uh, Mr. Avigdor Lieberman, he's known for his zingers. Uh, he said that Sweden needs to understand that relations in the Middle East are more complicated than a piece of furniture from Ikea that you assemble at home. He's, of course, referring to the very popular Ikea Furniture Company, which is a Swedish company and very popular here in Israel as well. Chuck? Well, it's more than just Sweden. It's more than one piece of furniture. The whole dining room set has participated. There's a lot of other European countries, including Britain, who have done the same. How are the Europeans packaging this action to recognize Palestine? Well, because Europe was so heavily involved in the creation of the state of Israel back in 1948 after the Second World War, they feel this kind of moral obligation to see a Palestinian homeland, and they believe that other countries in the world should get behind that effort and recognize a two-state solution, as many people uh, in the diplomatic community see that the uh, potential for a future Palestinian state is getting narrower and narrower with the increased settlement activity that the Netanyahu government has undertaken. That's the issue. Chuck? Now, the tensions, as we mentioned, remain high today in Jerusalem. What's the latest you can tell us about the situation from there in the city? Well, yes, indeed they do. And this is probably going to be a little bit of a long answer, so bear with me. You know, we, we have seen an uprising in the tensions uh, from when we spoke together yesterday. And uh, basically all of what is called East Jerusalem, which is the Arab area of Jerusalem, is really under uh, some restriction, shall we say. And that is because last night, uh, Rabbi Yehuda Glick, Glick, I should say rather, um, he was shot in the chest and in the abdomen after attending a conference. Um, and his attacker, uh, police were tipped off to his location, his home in an Arab neighborhood uh, just uh, south of Jerusalem. And he was subsequently shot when he reportedly opened fire on forces early this morning and then killed. Now, this has come after some uh, several days of rising tensions in Jerusalem uh, as the settlers have moved into homes, taken over 25 homes in the predominantly, it's, it's basically 99.9% Arab Muslim neighborhood of Silwan. Uh, then we had the terror attack of an Arab running over several people, uh, killing two in a light rail. Uh, that was several days ago. And so uh, after funerals for him, uh, there were a couple of Palestinians who were killed by the Israeli Defense Forces. And again, more funerals fuel more upsetness, more anger. So as Israel has t put into jail uh, scores of Palestinians, this raises tensions and it has caused more and more friction and the situation hasn't been able to cool down. Now, bear with me. The authorities have now decided to close the Haram al-Sharif, the Temple Mount behind me, not allowing Muslim worshipers to enter that compound. This is problematic, and it's an unusual step that the Israeli government is taking. It doesn't calm things. It very much aggravates things right now. And so tomorrow being Friday, the Muslim day of prayer, it has the potential to really ratchet up the tensions. I must make clear uh, there is a big difference between what is happening in what is called East Jerusalem and what is West Jerusalem, because in West Jerusalem, uh, everything is pretty much situation normal. And you may be able to hear behind me uh, some of the bar mitzvahs that are taking place. So even here in the old city, things are very much going on as normal. But in Arab East Jerusalem, there is in some places a lockdown, 
and in other places, uh, very much tension taking place. Chuck? We will close on a much lighter note because I know you want to talk about this. Congratulations on your San Francisco Giants winning the World Series. Yes, well, you know, that's what I have to say. Yes, 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 the San Francisco Giants taking that third uh, World Series title in five years. Um, it's wonderful news. My friends in San Francisco, very happy as well. Todd Warren, your team did it, buddy. Uh, <laughs> stick to it. You're going to have a victory in your life as well. Um, you know, it's, it's great. Um, you know, Madison Baumgartner, I'm glad he got the MVP. I'm glad to see Tim Lincecum uh, in the bullpen last night. He didn't get the pitch, but he did get onto the mound in the World Series, so that's good news. Um, you know, it, it's, it's fabulous. I'm very happy for the Giants. And, of course, it was a tremendous fall classic for the world of baseball, one that's written into the history books already. Chuck? All right, that's Israel's biggest San Francisco Giant fan, Brian Bush, reporting from Jerusalem. Now, San Francisco police did make a number of arrests last night as Giants fans spilled onto the streets celebrating their team's victory. The Giants beat the Kansas City Royals 3-2 at Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City. More than 9,000 people gathered to watch the game on a big screen in an outdoor plaza outside San Francisco City Hall where the exterior lights have been glowing orange all week. I can't even describe what I'm feeling right now. I knew deep down inside that we were going to win. I knew it. I knew it. I mean, it's in, it was in my heart that we were going to win. Yeah, like great pitchers. Everything is so amazing about them. Bumgarner, like, it's insane. Without him, we wouldn't have done it, but. This is the Giants' third World Series title in five years. Unfortunately, it is not as happy a scene in Sri Lanka where there seems no hope of finding survivors. After a mudslide tore through the Kaslanda tea plantation, there are widely conflicting reports about how many people had been buried alive under the rubble and mud, but villagers say the figure could easily exceed 200. Scores of children who had left for school early in the morning returned to see their homes vanished without a trace, along with their parents. Heavy monsoon rains caused the mudslide, which wiped out 120 workers' homes at the tea plantation about 140 miles east of Colombo. Most of Sri Lanka has experienced heavy rain over the past few weeks and warnings had been issued of mudslides and falling rocks. Coming up later in the show, Pastor Mark Lance concludes his teaching with part three of Walking in Wisdom. But up next, Dr. Richard Leslie Parrott talks about knowing and doing the will of God. Harvest will be right back after this. Behind me, the old city of Jerusalem, where so many things happen within the Bible. Today, we can send the Bible around the world. The Word of God can change lives, but we need your help. So go to the phone right now, 1-800-365-3732, or go to lacy.com and help us change lives through the Word of God and spread the Word. $5 can send one Bible. $180 sends an entire cake. The call right now, 1-800-365-3732, or go to lacy.com. Be a part of changing the world through Spread the Word. Are you tired yet have trouble sleeping? Wired yet can't focus? Let's face it, you only get one life. It's time to start living. It's time for a new you. Introducing the new you pack from Making Healthy Choices. This incredible package includes vitamin B12 with folic acid to promote focus and support cardiovascular health, vitamin D3 to build strong bones and muscles, Vitamin E400, an all-natural antioxidant and mineral concentrate, a fulvic acid trace mineral product essential for maximum cell function and performance. This exclusive offer is yours for the low price of $49.95 plus shipping and handling. You won't find these products in stores only by calling 1-800-965-2345 or by logging on to mhclife.com. It's time for a new you. It's time for life. Did you know that the old gold, silver, and jewelry hidden away in the Christian closets of America can be invested into lives for Jesus? Remember, that's how David funded the building of the temple. First Chronicles 29 says, whoever had precious stones gave them willingly. Look in that old trunk, rummage through that old purse. Will you ever wear that old family heirloom again? Will you ever dress up in those pearls, that gold locket or silver bangle? 
hunt it out and send it to LaSie Broadcasting and we'll convert it into changed lives for Jesus Christ. Jesus said, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Call us today at 1-800-365-3732 and ask how you can lay up your treasures in heaven. We have said it thousands of times, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But how do we know we're doing God's will? Well, that's the subject of Dr. Richard Parrott's new book, The Reluctant Journey, and the good doctor joins us now on Harvest. So how do we know we're fulfilling God's purpose for us? It's a, it's a challenging and wonderful thing to realize that when you receive the Word of God, oh my, you turn that over and suddenly say, I am now charged with the work of God. Mm -hmm. That is my responsibility. And for me, I find that that work is a, is a combination of this wonderful blessing and this overwhelming burden. Mm -hmm. And that when I set my mind and my heart to following God's will for me, what does he want me to do? Then I am set on a journey where uh, I, I, sometimes my students will often say this, it seemed like such a good idea to get this degree when I was starting. <laughs> <laughs> but as you are into it, yeah. then you realize this is a much bigger mm -hmm. challenge than I ever believed in my life. But when you give your whole heart to it, it changes your life. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, I can't speak for everybody, but I can speak for myself as a Christian. You mentioned that burden of responsibility. And I do want to do what God wants me to do, but sometimes I wonder if I know what God wants me to do. How do I discern that? To me, the real deep understanding is, of it is this. It, it's not out guessing. I wonder if God wants me to do that. I, I hope I guessed right. And you know, okay. life becomes a series of guesses. No, God wants you to be a partner. Mm. He is, how can I say this? Imagine the God of the universe slipping up behind you, putting his arms around you, and here's the key, and saying, how could, what could we create out of your life that will serve my purpose? And suddenly you are with God. You are included in what he wants to do. You're a partner with him. And the greatest partner, of course, for God is Jesus, all man, all God. Right. The spirit of Jesus is in you. Mm -hmm. So it's not just this one thing. I, I, I think if you were to hold a class that said um, how to discover the will of God in one week, it would pack, you would pack out your class. But a lot of us don't understand or we want to know if that's going to unfold. Am I, am I on it, the right path? It here? has to unfold. Okay. It unfolds as circumstances come. It unfolds as we make our choices. You know, the other thing is, I think lots of times when it comes to the will of God, I wish you'd just send me a tweet and then yeah. I'd know. Yes. But it doesn't work that way. Instead, he gave me a brain, expects me to use it and make good decisions. And sometimes my decisions are good and sometimes they aren't as good, but I'm still in his will because my heart and my desire mm -hmm. is to follow him fully. And when that heart and desire is there, God will work with all of our strange decisions in order to fulfill his purpose. You find this particularly, I, I tell you, in the stories of Abraham and, and Jacob and Joseph, who just made some, frankly, terrible choices. Sure. But God never gave up. He kept working his will with them and through them. You know, I started off by making that allusion to the Lord's Prayer, and that mm -hmm. wasn't by accident because you do this in your book and obviously, that's what Jesus gave us as our first way of communicating with God, right? Exactly. It, it is a prayer for people who want to partner with God. You know, when it's our Father who art in heaven, I find it interesting in this, this book where I apply this prayer to our, our founders of our faith from way back in Genesis. Every one of them had to leave their home before they could find the will of God. Hmm. They had to let go of the place where they grew up and take on God as a new father and in a hope of a new kingdom. 
And, and when you say, um, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that's the dangerous prayer. Yeah. Frank, there's a lot of people who do not want the will of heaven on earth, and they will fight it. But that was the prayer that Jacob understood. He saw, you know, that, that marvelous uh, stairway between heaven and earth, and he fought that battle. He fought that battle of his own humanity and the will of God for his life. And then, of course, Joseph, talk about bread and belonging. <laughs> he, 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 you know, he, he tried to put the past behind him, and, and he did well as he rose in power, but as soon as the brothers showed up, all that anger just rolled back into him again. And now, how do you get the deep healing that comes from that kind of wound? Well, you know, I was thinking about not only do most Christians want to do the will of God, but they hear voices. And so they're struggling with, how do I know this is my voice, not my voice, the enemy's voice or God's voice? So yeah. how can you tell the difference? Relationships develop over time. Mm -hmm. The first time, we may not hear it. I had a woman in my Sunday school class not long ago. I have such a, I have a marvelous class. It looks like the kingdom of God. There are people from all walks of life. She's a street lady. And she had a terrible time with her father. And she said, you know, I needed a father so bad that when I first began to hear voices, I thought I was hearing the voice of someone who would be a good person, a good father figure to me. But you hear the wrong voices first. But after a while, you learn. I said, you've heard your father's voice, haven't you, in heaven? She said, I have, and I'm learning to hear it better every week of my life. And we want it just bang. We'd like to say, do A, B, C, you've got it. It's a relationship. It's the way it works in marriage, the way it works with kids, the way it works with friendship, and especially with God. You come to know him, and you know his voice. Your book is filled with questions. Each chapter is a different question. If I want questions, I'll watch Jeopardy. I need answers. <laughs> where, where, where are the answers? <laughs> well, the, the questions are to dive, oh. drive you into the chapter, you know, and, and they are, but they're the questions we face as we're seeking to live out the, the will of God, to do his work. You know, why does this unfair thing happen to me? Where is God in all of the, am I abandoned? You know, is this really the voice of God that I'm, I'm hearing? And on and on, the stories that come out of these, these wonderful, wonderful patriarchs. I, 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 think, I think the question that's the, the most significant for me, though, is, it, it comes out of my own deep, deep life and experience is, how do you find the healing for the deep wounds? And that, to me, because the whole book moves toward the challenge of Jesus, when he stepped back from the dead, first thing he had to say on that Sunday night, which would be pretty significant, you know, if you've just come back from the dead, what you've sure. got to say matters. He said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. There's the partnership. Receive the Holy Spirit, meaning you're not alone, and then the part that just frightens us. For whatever you forgive on heaven will be forgiven in earth. I said, Lord, you've got that wrong. You, you forgive, and then I'm supposed to go out and forgive. No. We start the forgiveness process mm -hmm. by the way we treat people. And we must treat people with the tenderness and love of Jesus Christ. Well, Dr. Parrott, you also, you, you start each one with a question, but you share a lot of personal stories. Mm. Which one is your favorite, or do you have one? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> I've got stories about the, the kids and stories about wonderful friends and stories of, of all kinds. Students, let me give you an image. I'll give you an image uh, that I kind of, I, I enjoy this. In my office, there is a, a, a little yoke. That's, uh, like an like, oxen yoke. Like an oxen mm -hmm. yoke that you would use for young cattle or goats or something. It belonged to my father, hung over his desk all my life. And I, I, uh, I inherited that when he passed. And the reminder is, of course, Jesus in a beautiful way saying, I love you like you are, but together, you know, we can do better than this. He says, come unto me, all ye weary, broken. I will give you rest. Then take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, learn, we can do better than this, and you'll find rest. And I imagine 
Jesus putting his head in one side of that yoke and saying, Richard, join me. Now you still got a, you know, life's still a burden, mm -hmm. but it's not the burden it used to be. And the purpose has changed in him. He, he's doing most of the tugging and pulling oh, there, isn't he? Oh, my goodness. He is the one. He is the one. He's, he's, he's my best friend that loved me before I knew him. Well, to, I, we appreciate the book. We appreciate you spending some time with us today. Thank you. The book is entitled The Reluctant Journey to Connect with Richard. Go to www.mysoulpurpose.org. If you can't remember that, we've got a link at our website at harvest-tv.com to The Reluctant Journey. Still to come, an insider's guide to spiritual warfare as former psychic Christine McGuire reveals battle-tested strategies for defeating the enemy. But up next, Pastor Mark concludes his teaching with part three of Walking in Wisdom. We're right back with more Harvest after this. Many Christian ministries have desired to bring the gospel of Jesus to Israel, to proclaim his message of God's love to the villages and streets he walked while on this earth. Yet only one Christian network has been broadcasting the message of God's love to Israel for more than 10 years. By God's grace, LaCie Broadcasting has been bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ and the voices of many American ministries to every home in Israel via Middle East television. You can help this great work by becoming a partner in faith for as little as $25 a month. Call today. just outside Monrovia and uh, we're feeding kids here and it uh, became a very heavy rainstorm all of a sudden so we stepped inside the kitchen to get out of the rain. Yeah, this is the kitchen. This is where the kids' food is being cooked right now. Uh, they've got the wood, they've got stones built up, they've got the pot and the food is being cooked right here, right now. And this is what it takes uh, for these kids to get a meal every day. They've got the empty rice uh, packs that soy fortified for vitamins and minerals uh, and they're getting ready for lunch the kids are excited we're just waiting for the food to finish to be cooked and uh, also uh, uh, the rain to kind of settle down so that people can actually get out and around but this is what it takes to feed kids all over the world every single day and without your help we can't do it but this is what every child every day is all about they're getting the Word of God they're getting a, a, an education and they're getting a daily meal. And that's what it takes for these kids to have a future and to have a full life. Well, we're engaged in a conversation here on Connections about what it takes to seek after godly and biblical wisdom. Wisdom is that discernment you need to know the opportunities that God's brought to you, how to walk through those opportunities. Yesterday, we talked about wisdom coming from words. Today, we're going to talk about wisdom coming through relationships. Proverbs 11 and verse 14, look at this principle. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Proverbs 1 and 5 teaches that a wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Another scripture in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 15 and 33, teaches, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits, good manners. I want to, I want to tell you this, and I want you to remember this. Show me your friends, and I will show you your future. The people that are around you will either increase or decrease you. 
Someone that's not bringing increase will eventually take that energy out of you and sap that from you because the reality is there's no neutral people in your life. They're either fueling your dreams or they're fueling your doubts. Therefore, wisdom is built by developing the right relationships. It's very important that you look at this, the people that are around you, because you will never learn anything from someone that you resent. But someone you respect, you will learn multitudes of principles and wisdom from them. So therefore, find people who are at a higher level in life than you are so that they can pull you up rather than bring you down. We talk so much about peer pressure when we talk about our children. I have four children. I'm very careful about the peers and the people or the children that they surround themselves with. We, we know that influence that kids are surrounded by at school or on the playground, we know that influence will affect the rest of their life. You don't want your child hanging around drug addicts because eventually your child will become a drug addict. You don't want your child hanging around kids who drink because eventually they will drink. We understand that concept when it relates to our children, but why don't we get it when it applies to our lives as an adult? The principle is just the same even after we grow up. We take on the behavior of those with whom we spend the most time. In fact, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Think about that. Look at the five people around you. You are the average of those people. So when you tolerate mediocrity in your choice of companions, then you're going to be more accepting of mediocrity in your own life. In fact, if a lazy person isn't an irritation to you, then it's a sign that you've accepted laziness as the norm in your life. And most of the time, if you would ask a person, well, what's a true friend to you? You'll get this response. Someone who accepts me for who I am. Friend, I want to debunk that case. The boy behind the counter at McDonald's accepts you for who you are. He doesn't know anything about you. It's time to redefine what a true friend does. A true friend may accept you for who you are, but they are not content to leave you in that position. A true friend challenges you. They make you better than what you are. They hold you to a higher standard. They hold you accountable to your goals. The acquisition of wisdom can be greatly expedited by harnessing the wisdom of others. You don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. I need to surround myself with people that are smarter than me, people who've had experiences that I have never had, people who have gone places that I've never gone because they can offer a perspective that is different than yours. So here's what I want to challenge you to do today. If you want wisdom in your life, list everyone who's in your inner circle, those who are closest to you, those who influence you, including your family members, including your friends and your colleagues. And then next to each name, put an arrow to denote which direction that person is leading you, either up, increase, or down, decrease. And here's the question, do you see a pattern? Are you spending time with people who sour your life experience, or are you spending time with people that are investing in you, making you better? Friend, there might be some relationships today you need to change in your life. And I'm challenging you, if you want wisdom, get it from the right relationships, get it from the Word of God, Get it from the right literature. Feed your mind, feed your spirit. And I believe the Holy Spirit will give you the wisdom you need to walk through those doors of opportunity that are standing right in front of you today that will lead you to a greater life. Walking in wisdom, the best is yet to come by the grace of God for you. Partners, David had them when he built the temple, and Jesus needed them to complete his mission on earth. The Sea Broadcasting still needs partners today. When you join Partners in Faith, you are part of God's legacy of partnership. God is not willing for even one soul to be lost, and he depends on partners like you and me. Be a partner in faith. Reach the lost for Jesus. Lay up your treasure in heaven. Call today. 
Before Christine McGuire came to faith in Christ, she was an active witch in her church, a medium, and a ghost hunter. Today, the author uses her knowledge of the dark side to equip other Christians in spiritual warfare. Welcome back to The Harvest Show, Christine. Thank you so much for having me. Wow, I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've heard your story before. I mean, and you, you're coming back with this new project to equip mm -hmm. other Christians in spiritual warfare. But define for me, what is spiritual warfare? Well, spiritual warfare can really be understood in three levels. Mm -hmm. First, we have what is the invisible, unseen war that's going on between an angels and demons, those who are for God's purpose and those who are against. The next level would be what we experience ourselves when we have to deal with our flesh, the desires that we have, the choices that we have to make every day. And then that third level are those spiritual attacks that we receive from the enemy, which are really designed to either pull us away from God or to cripple our witness for Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, I introduced you as a former witch, but you told me in the past that you were a, quote, Christian witch, which is a contradiction in terms to me, but explain that. Exactly. Um, I had started in Wicca and moved into what's called traditional witchcraft, but at one point I missed Jesus basically, mm -hmm. and so I decided to take parts of Christianity and okay. pull them into the witchcraft I was practicing and call myself a Christian witch. It's not truly Christianity, mm -hmm. it is a self-formed religion or spiritual path. So what changed you from that to where you are now? Believe it or not, it was a ghost hunt because I was a medium and a ghost hunter. And there was one particular ghost hunt in 2007 where God brought me up short with reality of what I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. And I realized I had to make a choice. And I went back into scripture, which I had been ignoring for eight years, and realized I either continued what I was doing in the occult or chose to follow God. And I chose to follow God. Before we get into an insider's guide to spiritual warfare, you know, tomorrow is Halloween. A lot of people will be out trick-or-treating and, you know, they some people trick and go trick-or-treating and some do not. Some mm -hmm. believe in it, some do not, and some are Christians. What do you say about that? Well, honestly, I think this is a time when we can reach out to our neighbors. Mm -hmm. A lot of time you don't even talk to your neighbors, but on mm -hmm. Halloween you can. So if we can be a light to the world, not necessarily imitating what the world is doing, but being that light, that salt, um, by being the best witness for Christ we can, then I say let's do it. I want to mm -hmm. back up to one more thing here before we get into the spiritual warfare part. And that is when you decided to make the full commitment to Christ that you did, how tough was it for mm -hmm. you to give up your previous practices and things that you did? At first, it was very easy. God just blessed me for two years, just really sheltered me as I relearned what Scripture said and rebuilt that relationship with Him. Eventually, over time, there was what you might call a little spiritual backlash, temptation, but God has seen me through it all because he's faithful. Mm -hmm. What about the spiritual attack? Were you under a spiritual attack? The enemy, did he want to let you go? No, he really didn't. And that is part of what I learned and which is applied in, in the book is mm -hmm. that we have the authority in Christ to stand firm if we are submitted to God. And being submitted to God, I was able to over overcome those attacks. It just so happens that in the Catholic Church today at Mass, the first reading is from Ephesians 6, and mm. it talks all about the armor of God and, and putting that on for spiritual warfare. But I think for a lot of people, it's, it's difficult to understand. It's, it's not difficult to understand, okay, we have to fight the devil, but what is the breastplate of righteousness? What is the helmet of salvation? What really stood out to me is that our armor, our spiritual armor, is actually all wrapped up in our belief in Jesus as Christians. Mm -hmm. It is His righteousness that covers us. It is salvation that uh, informs our decisions and our understanding. It is the peace that we walk in, His peace, the faith that, that we hold in front of us, and His word that we use uh, to go on attack and to defend, as well as wrapped in His truth. Mm -hmm. It's all about being a Christian. So you say that there are 30 battle-tested strategies from behind enemy lines. So mm -hmm. kind of cover some of those strategies for us. Well, honestly, they're very basic. 
first and foremost, mm -hmm. remember that God is for you. He's not just throwing you out into the battle unequipped. He fully equips us. The other is to remember that Satan is a liar. He's the father of lies. And so we have to be prepared and aware of what not only scripture says, but what those lies could be so that we don't get them confused. So we give him way too much credit, don't we? We do. Mm -hmm. He is certainly a powerful enemy. He is a supernatural enemy, and he likes to mimic what God does. But as Christians, we have no reason to be afraid because God is with us. Now, you say we have no reason to be afraid, but you know, I just got done doing the international mm -hmm. news, and we've mm -hmm. got this Ebola outbreak, and we've had these terrorist activities all around the world. So how does a Christian fortify themselves? You say, don't be afraid, but I've got all this happening all around. Mm -hmm. Well, we go to Matthew 6, where Jesus tells us, if God can clothe the fields, you know, the grass of the field, and he can feed the birds, he can surely take care of us. And even with these frightening things that are happening in the world, we can put our trust in God. He is faithful to his promises, to his people. We just have to stand on that faith. Now, Christine, you also talk about how we open the door to some of these attacks and with very practical things like gossip. Mm -hmm. When I was reading this, I was like, oh, a lot of Christians may not see it that way. So talk about how that opportunity presents itself. I think we find ourselves in battlefields such as gossip and strife and anger and worry and fear the, it's part of our daily life, so we don't recognize it as spiritual warfare. But these are choices that we have to make. Will we gossip at the, at the water cooler, or mm -hmm. will we choose to encourage people to change the subject? Will we act like Christ, or will we go our own way? These are all spiritual warfare tactics and, and uh, activities that if we recognize the very small decisions we, and make, have victories in those smaller decisions, when the big things come along, we have a better chance of standing firm and being mature in our faith. Well, and one of the big ones right now for men and women, but primarily for men, is pornography. I mean, mm. it, it's something, and I've heard this logic used by people who say, well, it's, I'm the only one looking at it. How can it possibly impact somebody else? Well, research has told us that pornography actually changes the brain and how mm -hmm. you relate to other people in, you know, in your relationships. It's very damaging not only to yourself spiritually, but emotionally, mentally, and to your relationships with your wife or your, you know, your spouse, whether it's a man or a woman who's viewing this pornography, which is, I believe, part of the reason why Scripture tells us we are to uh, honor our spouse, but also to think on things that are pure and noble and good and right and avoid these things that are of the world. One of the things you talk about is what not to do. Mm. So name a couple of those things. Well, one is to deny that spiritual warfare exists. That That's is so <laughs> true. I hear a lot of people say, oh, I don't believe in that. But that doesn't mean it's not real. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So as long as we are acknowledging that it happens, we are not setting ourselves up to be victims of the enemy. Mm -hmm. I think that's a big one. There's a new movie that's out now called Ouija, based on uh, a Ouija board, and, and you have experience in the occult. How dangerous are things like that? Oh, very dangerous. Um, the Ouija board is a spiritual tool. It is used for uh, communication with the dead, and a lot of people think of it as a harmless game, and it's actually marketed to children. But it is truly uh, a, a conduit to demons. And so if we use those things, we are opening spiritual doors that sometimes can't be shut. So I say avoid that movie altogether. Mm -hmm. Good news is Rotten Tomatoes only gave it about 10%. So <laughs> Thank it's not doing too well at the box office from my understanding. Well, Christine, before we let you go, kind of speak to that person. Take about 30 seconds to speak to that person who has no peace, who's struggling mm -hmm. in a battle and in just that person doesn't know how to fight. Mm. Honestly, Psalm 18 is my favorite psalm to go to when there's that lack of peace in my life or in someone who's struggling because it talks of God's faithfulness, that he is a warrior, that he is for us and with us and he strengthens us. Mm -hmm. We can have peace by just trusting in his faithfulness. Wow, thank you so much for sharing your insight with us, Christine, and for stopping by here at The Harvest Show. And to connect with Christine, go to christinemaguire.com 
or you can go to harvest-tv.com and click on show info in the menu bar for a link to her new project, An Insider's Guide to Spiritual Warfare. And when we come back, Pastor Charles joins us with today's prayer request. Did you know that millions live in spiritual darkness seeking the Word of God? Lacey Broadcasting is piercing the darkness 24 hours a day. The window of opportunity to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ has never been greater, but who knows when it will close. Join Partners in Faith today for as little as $25 a month, and you can help us bring light into a dark world. Join us by visiting PartnerInFaith.com today. Critical news is happening in the Middle East 24-7, and I am living in the middle of it all, right here in Jerusalem. Correspondent Brian Bush brings you a front row seat to major events unfolding in the Middle East. Brian knows the people and the land, keeping you abreast of the news with expert analysis from a Christian perspective. Watch my Israel Up to the Minute reports on The Harvest Show right here, only on this Lissy Broadcasting Station. How many Bibles can you send to a waiting seeker or a new believer today? Lissy Broadcasting is committed, wherever possible, to send a Bible to every person outside the U.S. who asks for one. And because each Bible costs just $5 to print, ship, and place in outstretched hands, your gift of $25 today can send five Bibles, and a special gift of $50 could send 10. This is so important because when a new Christian puts his or her faith in Jesus, he or she can never really be firmly rooted in faith without a Bible to read, study, or share. It'll become their handbook for living a transformed life. Please send your gift of $50 to send 10 Bibles, $25 to send five Bibles, or whatever gift you can send today. Every $5 of your gift will place another Bible in waiting hands. Call the C Broadcasting now at 1-800-365-3732. 1-800-365-3732 or online at lacy.com. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Take delight in the Lord. He will give you the desires of your heart. The Western Wall is located in the old city of Jerusalem at the foot of the western side of Temple Mount. Parts of the wall are remnants of the ancient wall that surrounded the Jewish temple's courtyard and is arguably the most sacred site recognized by the Jewish faith outside of Temple Mount itself. It has been a site for Jewish prayer and pilgrimage for centuries. The earliest source mentioning the Jewish attachment to the site dates back to the fourth century, but it came under control of Israel in 1967 during the Six Day War. Jews and non-Jews pray at the wall 24-7 every day of the year. Most foreign dignitaries pay tribute at the wall when visiting Israel. I'm going to pray at the wall on my next trip to Jerusalem coming up in November. I have had the privilege to pray for thousands of people over the years, taking their request with me and offering them up at the Western Wall in prayer. I want to take your prayer request with me in November and leave them at the wall. You can call our prayer line, one 800 365-3732 or you can email us at prayer at .com. and be sure to watch the Harvest Show's live program November 11th where you will see how I personally took your request and prayed over them at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. I look forward to praying for your needs. Call or email today. That'll be a special day on November 11th, and we really encourage you to get those prayer requests into Pete Summerall. Not that we can't pray for them before then, we'd certainly be happy to, but we want to be able to take those prayer requests over to the Western Wall, so get them in at prayeratlessee.com, or you can call our prayer line at 1-800-365-3732. One more housekeeping matter to take care of. 
We want to remind you, with so many people looking for work, we want to tell you when we have a position open here, and we have one for a graphic design person, as the lovely and talented Meredith Cheddar is leaving us. So we encourage you to apply for this full-time position. We require two years of design experience or a bachelor's degree, and you can send that in uh, to hr at lacy.com or apply online at lacy.com. But as we're talking about prayer, let's get into our international prayer line and join our friend, Pastor Charles, who joins us today with prayer requests and praise reports as always. What do you have for us today, Pastor? Yeah, well, uh, I hate to see Meredith leave as well. I, I just uh, simply asked the question, Chuck, what did Dean do? <laughs> well, that's usually a legitimate question to ask. In this case, it's Valerie who offended her, but that's okay. Oh, okay. Okay, Dean, you're off the hook. <laughs> hey, hey, we got Joe in Texas. We got some praise reports. Uh, different ones are coming in, Chuck. And I tell you, they are really amazing. God is definitely working. He's, uh, this is Joe out of Texas says, I haven't worked in a good while. So I called prayer line to agree with me in prayer for a job. Well, bless God, I got one. And my first check is going to God. As Sherry in New Jersey says, I was in dire straits and called prayer line because I had to get a place to live and fast. But you guys agree with me in prayer and God started working. I not only got an apartment, but God touched my son to pay all the moving expenses along with the security deposit. And then Dora in Michigan says, my mom was in a bad way and we called prayer line to agree with us for her healing. We found out later that the devil was trying to put a stroke on her at that very moment. Thanks for being uh, there for us, prayer line. And then we have Sadie in Michigan as well says that my grandson is overweight and I called you all at prayer line to agree with me that he would get the message and begin to lose weight. Well, he has lost 13 pounds and his diabetes has regulated. Well, God bless him for doing that work and getting that taken care of. Pastor Charles, won't you pray for our viewers today? Sure, sure. Father in heaven, we thank you today, Lord God, for all that you're doing, especially for those ones who are calling in. They're trusting you, Lord God. They're even trusting us, Lord, to agree with them with for you. But Father, in Jesus' mighty name today, Lord God, those ones who are seeking deliverance, those ones who need to be saved, and those ones, Lord God, who need healings in their bodies, minds, wills, and emotions. Father, we ask that you will continue, Lord, to bless like you always do, and we'll continue to give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Charles. Yeah. You just heard you can give us a call if you need prayer anytime, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're here to pray with you. We want to agree with you, and don't worry about a thing. Cast all your cares to the, on the Lord, and because the Bible says he cares for you and we care for you too as well. We'll see you tomorrow on Harvest. To have what scripture says is given by inspiration of God is a real treasure. And that's why we want to invite you to sign up for the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall. This free daily e-devotional draws from Dr. Sumrall's timeless writings and biblical insight on many issues confronting us today. Just go to lacy.com and click on the treasury sign up banner to receive the treasury of Dr. Lester Sumrall in your inbox every day. That's lesea.com. The Harvest Show is produced by LaCie Broadcasting and is viewer supported by people just like you. Thank you for inviting us into your home today.